Okay, I'd like to bring the Upper Moreland Township regular meeting for July 1st, 2024 to order. Uh, first, we have a moment of silence, please. If you would rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, would you take roll, please? Ward 1. Present. Ward 2. Present. Ward 3. Here. Ward 4. Here. Ward 5. Here. Ward 6. Present. Ward 7. Mr. President, all uh, commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioner Lockard, Township Solicitor and Township Manager are also present. Thank you. Uh, approval of the meeting minutes. Are there any changes from the board? Anybody from the public? Okay, we'll move them forward. Any, any public comments? Yeah, sure, that's what. Pardon? Any, any public comments? I said from the public a bit. Yeah. Oh, missed that one. Uh, okay, public comments, non-agenda items. You'd like to come up. <clears throat> Let me put this down. I am Susan Worth Lamana, Ward 62. Um, I would like to talk to you for a few minutes, so I'm going to look at our solicitor over here. <laughs> Um, about development, but not about the specifics of the projects before you this evening, but about the overall effects of development on the community in which we live, and to gain from you all, minus, of course, uh, Cheryl Lockard, uh, going forward, the picture that you each hold of the township when these projects are completed. Um, I'm old. In 1949, a large group of citizens, I wasn't there, stood at the corner of York and Eastern Roads looking at a sign about what was to come in the heart of Willow Grove. The war had been over, the military had been coming home for three years plus, and there was a major housing crisis across the United States. This is in our first. Our first move in the direction of change was a major food store in Willow Grove took the place of the botanical gardens that was the entrance to the Willow Grove Park since its inception in the late 1800s. This was followed by a rapid building of new homes, uh, the reduction of our farmlands, the opening of the Turnpike Exchange, the development of a true shopping center. Then came the new schools in the 1960s, the Turnpike Motels, which some of us remember, and a new administration building that we are standing in right now. So we have seen changes for sure. Not always the vision I think we may have wanted. However, in the late 1970s, when I moved here, there was a walkable area down Eastern Road. We used to call it window shopping because there were actual windows and doors and you entered from the sidewalk and you looked at the displays to decide if you wanted to come in. But that all disappeared with the upgrades that created what we all called in this room at one point in time, the Chinese wall. Now you had to come into the stores through the parking lots to even get an idea of what the merchandise was inside. And this was a retail model that lasted a rather long time. Now we have additional growth in what we call apartment complexes. It's a trend across the United States. I see it in Southern California and certainly up and down the East Coast. When I tried to calculate the future impacts on our total community, I looked at traffic, services, and schools. Looking at these three additional projects that I know you are looking at tonight, and doing a potential maximum number of restaurants, rest, residents, sorry, based upon the data that I could get to, we could have over 1,100 or more additional Upper Moorlanders in the next three years, given that all of these projects come in in the next three years. 
So I would like to hear more from all of you on the bench as to how you see us absorbing these adults and children from a totality viewpoint, not taking data from each project uh, as if it and it alone were the only impact in a particular area. We all drive through and around this township. For instance, going to the medical facilities on Maryland and computer roads is already an issue. The schools have reported to you in this room the effects of overcrowded classrooms today. And numerous residents have stood right here discussing their own concerns with overstressing our safety services, given the small number of trained police and firefighter candidates. So I ask you to share with us going forward how you see your community, our community, looking and functioning over the next 10 years. And please let your vision inform you as you make decisions for all of us. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <coughs> Any other pot comments or agenda? Not agenda? Okay. Uh, Treasure, Treasurer's activity report. Uh, any questions on that from anybody on the board? From the general public. Okay, we'll move that into the record. Uh, community uh, development recommendations. Code enforcement, we have none at this time. The first thing we have is a land development subdivision. The committee recommends motion to approve resolution R 2024-14, granting federal realty OP LP a preliminary final land development approval for the proposed Willow Grove Shopping Center redevelopment at 10 Park Avenue and Easton Road. Do I have a motion or I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a second. Uh, from here, we have, uh, let me see here, A through A through K, we have waivers. These were all discussed in our last meeting, uh, last couple meetings actually. Is, is there anybody on the board? Well, first I'll make a motion uh, with this to approve all the waivers. Second. 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 Okay, now we have it all on the floor. Uh, are there any questions from any of the commissioners on the waivers, the way how they are stated after the move forward? With none. Uh, any from the community on the waivers? Anybody from the developer? Okay. With that, uh, I'll take a vote on the waivers first. All in favor, say aye. 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 Against, abstain, so moved. Now I'll take a vote on the approval of resolution 2024-14. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Against, abstain, <clears throat> so moved. Next, motion to approve resolution 2024-15, granting BT Blair LLC a preliminary final land development approval for the proposed 262 unit multifamily development at 2317 Blair Mill Road, 2300 Computer Avenue, 2309 and 2317 Blair Mill Roads. That's the committee's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, with that, we'll move forward to Sean the. Sean. Uh, just for just for clarification, uh, Mr. McHugh. Uh, so as far as the waivers goes, before we begin that conversation, uh, Mr. McHugh forwarded to Mr. Baumler of my office on Thursday. Uh, 
uh, request that two of the waivers uh, be addressed. Uh, that would be an addition, additional waiver, which would be a letter to waiver E, which would be a uh, related to section 300-43D1E, to not require currently installed irrigation for shade trees within a parking island, which is less than 300 square feet, measured from the outside curve to outside curve. The applicant is requesting that that be granted. That was not included in the draft resolution, but was included in the waiver letter reviewed by the Board of Commissioners on 517. Additionally, they are requesting that uh, what, what had been marked as waiver G, uh, which is section 300-45A, for the requirement of providing a replacement tree based on a sliding scale of size. They are requesting that that uh, waiver request be removed based on the waiver. Uh, so that will summarize the changes in the Yep, the plans have not changed. They are consistent with what was reviewed by the CDC. Uh, I think with just some, some uh, administrative issues there on the resolution. For the G, the requirement for providing the replacement trees based on a sliding scale. Uh, where was that missed? In other yep. words, is that something you did not ask for? No, we had asked for it, and then when Gilmore had reviewed it, they determined it wasn't applicable, so we are no longer seeking it. Okay. All right, so G is being erased. And the other one was so, Alex sent the draft, but didn't get the draft. It was in the letter, so he brought it to our attention and tried to address it. Okay. The other one, you want to just explain that? Sure. Uh, George, you want to just briefly? And George, just describe yourself for the record. Yeah, uh, George Hartman with Bowler, civil engineer for the project. So the ordinance requires um, permanent irrigation if the landscape islands are less than 300 square feet. So it doesn't apply to all the landscape islands. We do have a few that are less than 300 square feet. We're proposing to not install the irrigation. We have plants that we're proposing plant material that doesn't require to be irrigated. After 18 months, it should grow on its own. <laughs> Um, I don't know if they specifically supported it, but they didn't oppose it. And it, that's it's what something the, we've done in the past forever. Right. Right. And, and, and we discussed it at the CDC. Yeah, it was yes, discussed, it was and discussed and reviewed at the CDC. Yep. Okay. Uh, does anybody on the board have a question on either one of those items to take out G and uh, waive the sprinkler system for where it was supposed to be? And we have done it to pass. It was talked about because I did remember the sprinkler. I'm sorry. Uh, so I, there would be a motion to approve the waivers. Okay. So uh, next, I'll make the motion to approve the waivers. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. We have a second. Uh, any more discussion by the board on that? waiver that's new is there any discussion from the general public okay uh is there any other discussion to be taken by the board on this issue for uh resolution 2024-15 okay any other discussion from the public yes Sandra Richmond, 1505 Sycamore Avenue. I want to be clear that if this uh, land development for the executive muse is approved, the, de the developer is going ahead at their own risk as there is an active appeal on file in the Court of Common Pleas as we speak, and it so far has survived all challenges to it. You are correct. Okay. Secondly, I want to know uh, your input on you commissioners on your plan. Should the developer go ahead with development on the land and the appeal uh, survives and the decision is overturned in the court, what you will do about any development that has taken place on the land? 
you know, think we, and Sean, this would probably be a question well, for you. It's on record. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. With that, all in favor for uh, motion 2024-15, please by, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, abstain, so moved. And was there a vote on the waivers as well? Oh, that's right. I have to vote on the waivers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everybody, if we say aye for uh, the waivers, as far as that, please signify by saying aye. 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 Against, abstain, so moved. Thank you. Next, motion to approve resolution 2024-16, granting 1852 Hatboro LLC an additional waiver of street tree requirement from the previous approved development application for a proposed cloud 10 car wash at 4290 Davisville Road. This is where they had two trees uh, that would be on top of the uh, utilities. Correct. Yes. Your Cotter Surgeon with Highland Engineering. So yes, okay. there's two trees that we cannot install due to the proximity to the overhead wires to the east and then our sanitary and stormwater that are underground to the west. So we have one proposed street tree along Davisville Road, as well as we are maintaining two existing on the southern side towards the access drive of Davisville Road. So it's just the two in the middle there. Okay. Uh, I think I was in the last one. It was, I don't think there was a, in lieu of because it was already, they agreed on the in lieu of or something in a prior for, for the two trees. For the trees? Yeah. Correct. So okay, those were actually <laughs> calculated in our fee in lieu for the $1,440. Okay. Those were included. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, so with that, we have, I made the motion, we have a second, we have a second one, that, okay. Uh, and then we have, that is the waiver. I'll make the motion to approve the, the waiver. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, so moved. And then the final vote would be for the whole resolution of 2024-16 for the, to approve the whole project for the addition here. All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, the committee makes a motion to approve the conditional use decision on order submitted by KRE group for the properties located at 2405 and 24. 25 Maryland Road. This does not have any conditions. Am I correct? Yeah, this is just affirming the decision. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, the board recommends it. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions from the board? Uh, this project worries me a little bit. I think the uh, facilities might get a little overcrowded. Um, I know they're going to be taking down some trees too as well. Um, I feel like this project just doesn't sit right uh, with me as a whole. Okay. Anybody from, any other commissioners? Anybody from the public? Yes, ma'am. Rosemary Doman, I live at 2405, um, and I spoke the last meeting. Yeah. Um, I was a little less informed than I am today, <laughs> although I'm not very informed now, but um, I will say that uh, it is very concerning to me now that I've read through their materials a few points, not a lot. I mean, progress is going to be made and things are going to get built, and I'm not trying to block the building of this in any, well, not in any way, but in some ways. So the concern for me is that originally, the original plan did uh, is really about 
joining the two properties to make it one. I'm sure there's some benefit to KRA for doing that. And originally they only wanted to put a roadway through for the circle, which is only a three way circle right now, bordered on one side by many, many layers of trees that lead down into the storage drain towards the turnpike. It is also where directly across the street from our grill, pool, sidewalk area where a lot of, uh, it's a common area where a lot of kids play. Um, and unfortunately there have also been quite a few accidents um, but the fire department apparently uh, did not allow that plan to go through and it required them to put a roadway out to Maryland Road, which ne negates the need to put a road now where the circle is. That circle where they have on the diagram is, would be incredibly dangerous, I believe, considering how dangerous it currently is. They did put in speed bumps this month after four years, mostly because of my objections. I have spoken to uh, management there several times about a few things and they are acting on some of them, but um, they are uninformed about the, the new building. They, they don't know anything about the trees. I spoke to the regional manager this week and they didn't, she didn't know anything about the trees being taken down, although she did agree that I had a point um, because she does know what's happening on the property. Um, it would also increase uh, people parking on the 2405 property, which is already extremely difficult to find parking. I don't have a problem. I pay for a parking spot inside a garage, but a lot of the tenants do and complain weekly. So that's something that would be easily looked up by KRE to see that that's a problem. And a roadway through would just allow access easily from that property to come over and take up parking spaces on what again, I said is already a kind of a dangerous intersection. Um, I have two dogs, I walk them there pretty regularly because I walk around the buildings. Um, the building behind 300 has the dog run um, it's already kind of overused and they, um, in 247 amenities is one of the things that it talks about in, in you know, these kind of properties. And they have no plan to increase uh, sidewalks along that way. They have no plan right now to increase um, uh, the property for dogs to allow um, to go back there. And they have no um, plan right now to increase the grill, although there is a recreational area designated on the new plan, it does not say grills, which considering they would need gas lines for them, you would think that that would be specifically in the plan. So to go forward with no um, plans in place in writing from KRE to do this, I feel like gives them just an open checkbook to do whatever they want on that property without any regard for the residents that already live at 2405. I don't see a real need to, for the, it doesn't benefit the residents to combine those two properties. It definitely doesn't benefit the residents to put a roadway in there, either side. Um, and just this week, like more access to 2405, uh, my neighbor's car was stolen out of the locked garage. Like, so there have been quite a few police responses to um, people coming down from Philadelphia in stolen cars and wrecking cars. I mean, there's, there's a lot of negative activity already going on there and to create more access to it, it's just gonna create more problems. And then the trees. So those trees are 50 to 100 years old. They have wide leaves and they block all the noise from the turnpike to the grill area. So to take down six or seven layers of trees in order to gain this road and five parking spaces, which they don't really account for how many parking spaces they're allowing for the new property. They have 39 listed, I'm assuming is a garage. I've asked multiple people at KRE to confirm that they're putting in a garage because it does not designate garage. It just says 39 parking spaces. When you're talking about 55 apartments, obviously that's not enough parking spaces. And when you count the ones around the outside, it's not nearly enough to, on the, on the, assuming that that's an accurate depiction of how many parking spaces they're putting in, it is not nearly enough without a garage. So let's assume they're putting in the garage, they're putting in the extra parking spaces along the outside. Five would not matter. And there is space, according to the testimony in the last meeting, for them to move those five parking spots to the other side of the property. Now that they've put in a road there, they're gonna to have to take out more uh, of the edge there and it would not impede the 25 foot rule because parking spaces don't count for the 25 foot rule. So they would have no problem putting them in. There were a few concerns of mine in the last testimony from Carrie, who I was hoping would be here since they had 10 experts last time and a lawyer. Um, the lawyer stated while he was under oath that he went to the property and he spoke to the people uh, in sales and in um, the management, I spoke to them, they have never spoken to the lawyer there. He said he was there that day, 
Nobody is aware of his presence there that day. There are five employees that work there. Two of them live on the property. Both of them are in maintenance. Neither one of them have children. Neither one of them have lived, all, both of them live in Building 100, which is far away from where we're talking about. And both of them have reason to want to push this project through because they would be adding three uh, people under the supervisor. So he would be getting a raise to supervise more than double his staff. And the full-timer who lives there would also be benefiting because he would have less work to do and also potentially reach a supervisory type level with more than double the staff of management there. So I just feel like there's a lot of questions about this project that haven't been answered by KRE and that we can't rush into you know, this project, especially when you're talking about things like taking down trees that cannot be replaced. Like, I have pictures from when, uh, again, in this statement, he said he was on the property and he saw the trees. Those trees are not taller than me. I have multiple pictures of the entire line of trees that have been there for four years, and they have not grown taller than I am to block it. Plus, they're pine trees, which, as you know, widely trees block way more noise and also help with rain uh, retention and all versus evergreens, which are just one line and don't even touch each other. So, you know, assuming that it would take four more years for them to double their size, uh, they still wouldn't be high enough to block the noise from the turnpike. I had submitted prior to all of these to the management there when asked, when I told, I, how would I know that they had bought the property? The property was still being used by the renter. Um, when asked by the management what my suggestions were to help, you know, move this along, and none of them are in the plans. So to me, you know, I feel like they just disregard without force of the board getting behind some of these ideas to not, you know, just push through whatever they want to do to build. You know, Carrie lives in, or, or is, is, their offices are in uh, New Jersey, in Newport, and that's a really overcrowded area. So to me, people who live there don't understand what it's like to live here. And, you know, we don't want to become that. So I would ask that we review some of the notes of the last meeting that were, again, not necessarily deliberately false, but were not accurate, and that they come up with a better plan to, uh, as, as 247, the code that we're talking about, save some of the natural resources, like the trees, that also lead, again, into the storage drain. You take those row of trees out, take it even down to one row, and you're removing quite a bit of ground cover that absorb that. It's also habitat for quite a few birds and stuff that we like to look at, which would go to amenities. You know, being able to sit at the grill and see blue jays and, and whatever, versus hearing noise and, you know, the, the, the smell of the turnpike comes up. We smell it in our dog run because the dog run is right up against it. I'd asked for a soundproof barrier to be put up. That's not in the plan. I'd ask for them to continue the walkway all the way around so that people could more easily walk their dogs, kids, whatever, on the back of the property. That's not in the plan. I asked for them to put in a crosswalk at the clubhouse so people, because there is no crosswalk on that road, um, the road coming into the uh, thing, and there is no handicap access ramp. I have Parkinson's, so sometimes that's an issue for me. Um, so there's, there's an easy way for them to connect the two properties if that's really their ultimate goal, simply by a walkway from the clubhouse to the other property, further up, away from the circle, where children, people walking with dogs would have a much better chance of safely crossing the property. Um, there are multiple other things, but I don't want to take the board's time up tonight about it because we ran out of time last time. But I think you can see from the points that I've already made, and thank you for making some of the points with me, um, that this project is not ready to be greenlit and go forward until they respond in writing and on their plans to some of the requests that were made long before they made those plans, before they even started them. Because like I said, I submitted that list to the manager who submitted it to them before these were even started. When the, when the property was originally built for the purpose of building apartments there. So I, I, you know, I just feel like they're not acting in good faith. They're not here tonight to represent themselves. So, you know, what can we say other than this isn't ready? Again, not against them building the apartments. I just want them to do it in the right way. Maybe it costs them five apartments because they have to put in more parking spots. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an architect, but I am a resident and I do feel like this could be much, much more respectfully done. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Do you have any questions? Yeah. Not a question, a comment. Uh, all of those issues will be in our land development uh, for that. 
the sidewalks, the everything that you just stated. This is strictly saying they're allowed to build an apartment. So okay. when they all of those issues, you always do conditional use first because otherwise they're not going to start engineering and right. do, spending that money unless they know that they could build an apartment there. But in the plan that they submitted that we're approving today, if you approve it, allows them to cut down those trees, which can't be replaced. Now we're, so, we're approving the conditional use. They can use this apartment. All of those other things, they have to come back in for land development. Okay. Because, I mean, land development is all of the things you just talked about. Okay. So what's interesting is that, so the posting for the meeting last week that was delayed is still up, but they didn't put a posting for this meeting, which I don't know if they had to, but they didn't. Um, and so the only thing I can go by is the code that was posted, which is 247, which I looked up and that's the only code that was listed on the thing that was saying what this meeting was about. And it says in it specifically that it is for, um, things like morals and, um, land use and energy conservation, which one of my questions would be in the next meeting, why aren't they putting, you know, government subsidized, uh, solar panels on the roof that face the turnpike. It's not like it's going to be ugly for anyone. Like, why aren't they putting in water heaters that, you know, automatically heat versus all of those apartments having to run gas and use, th there's a lot of other questions, like I said, that I would save for the next meeting. Yeah. But right now, the concern is that they cut those trees down yeah. and they can't be replaced. Okay. And that is for the next meeting. That is the You're trees. That's our- uh, Cut those trees down until the next, it's, until the next, stage is approved if they get approval today to build an apartment complex they can anything that's over a certain caliber anybody can take down there are certain calibers they can't take down since they applied for this so based on so you if, say if they have a one inch tree, how wide the tree is they could clear ground shrub or something like that uh they can't grade they can't you know there's other things that they can't do so a lot of those trees um are not like oaks they're not wide they, they don't have very wide um trunks they're very tall they're 100 feet tall yeah. but they're not um very wide trunks it's just the type of tree they have very wide leaves and um such so i would say that again if you're going to prove this mm -hmm. that a you know caveat to it needs to be no tree cutting in that section until the next meeting is we're able to hear uh, you know yeah. what their plan is because when he spoke last time, he said they were planning on saving a few trees. And that to me means like maybe a few red line. But if you look at where the road is, there's no way they are saving a few trees. There's no way. If they have to put a road in, there's six rows of trees that are as wide as a road plus whatever, maybe they put in a sidewalk, that are going to be taken out. It is at least two thirds of the trees that are directly across from the grill. I could show you pictures if you really need yeah, That one I would have to ask Paul on what size they're allowed up to, to de shrub or something, but uh, it'll all be calculated out ahead of time uh, before they can even get that uh, permit to do so any of that. Who approves the permit after the calculation? Paul. So Paul does. Not, that's Pat. Paul, 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 that's code, code enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> zoning law for tell. Paul yeah. so, so how do we influence that decision as a public? That, uh, to call, Paul, to trees, call yeah. code enforcement and ask if they even have a, a plan or anything to do it would be the first thing uh, that and if you get the information because uh, it's not in their packet just so you know like no no because this is strictly for land use that's land development i understand land this use, is, but you're saying strictly but, for land use but if you're saying that they can anybody can cut down the trees anybody can go on my yard and cut them down right that's your yard it's your property that uh this and is, that's their yard their property right but they have to get approval, right? So they have to get yeah. if only you for say, certain. Oh, you're, it's okay to put in the road. They're going to start cutting down trees. And, uh, only for certain things, and uh, I think there's, Sean. I don't even. There's times that you, yeah, in a year in advance, they actually have. They used to so, and all that I, stuff. I, I raised my hand just to address one of the procedural concerns. Last time was the hearing. What's on here is just a motion to approve the draft decision, which I believe was forwarded to all the parties. Nope. And that was it. Yes, it was. Nothing. You're on the email. I, I'm just telling you, I've been looking for the email because I was going to okay. talk to you after the meeting because I had come up to you after the last this time you is... asked for it, but I, I didn't receive it. All right. Thank you. So. It, I, okay. For whatever reason. I don't all know. Right. Maybe it got blocked. But. 
Um, but, but all tonight is the approval of the decision. You were granted party status. You had the opportunity to comment at the hearing. There's no re-advertisement after that. Your opportunity to comment was at the hearing. Now the board is doing, making a business decision or we, in the public. And we announced that the, yeah. it would be tonight at that right. meeting. Right. What was announced at the meeting, and I'm sorry if I'm ignorant of the process, but it was that basically we were out, of, it was late, and we were going to, there were two ways that it could have gone. One was just to prove it, and the other was to close the meeting at that point and come to this meeting and, you know. Well, they closed the hearing. Correct. Yes. So that yeah, because we can go to 11 hearing. o'clock. They're voting on a decision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we still get to have input. You have, you can comment, yes. But it's not. But it's not like you can call witnesses or you can comment on, as you have. Okay. And like I said almost all your questions are land development. That would go to Paul Pertel is uh, our. And you, you have the opportunity to comment, but it doesn't mean the board necessarily has to agree with your comments. They can still no, render a decision. I understand. And yeah. One board member obviously has a concern as well. But yeah. I'm saying, once those trees are cut, there's nothing that can be done to replace them. So how do we? They have to go through land development. We can address it in land development if they would. If can, they can we clarify for the public in I guess simplest terms what we're voting on tonight a and what use, a, use of the property. It's they're allowed to use, use it as an apartment. And what would happen if we voted yes and what would happen if we voted no? If a majority voted no, what would happen is the applicant likely has uh, you know presented evidence on the record. Conditional use is a uh, is classified as a permitted use in that zoning district. They had to satisfy certain criteria under our ordinance. Uh, they put on voluminous evidence that they have. So likely what would happen is if you turn down this decision, uh, the applicant could choose to go to the Montgomery County Court of Common Pleas and could choose, could try and attempt to overturn this board's decision. That's likely what would happen. And then if we vote yes, then what? Uh, even, yes, then the they, they, they move forward and I assume they will be presenting land development plans. We just want a clear, you know, yeah. of what's going on for the public. Sure, 100%. Similar to what we did with the executive meeting tonight, right. they had got the condition of use back in 2023. Today we voted on their um, the land development. So that's the normal process. But I hear what you're saying that we give them, technically they can cut the tree down today without this conditional use because they do own the property. Right. They do own that property. Um, why would they want to cut them down? I'm just saying, but you're, but you're trying to apply the conditional use to them, giving them the right to cut down the tree. Today, they could cut down that tree because they own that property. And not put in the road. They could just cut down the tree just to cut down the tree and not do anything. Right. But like out, outside of this development they want to do, they could cut that tree down today. Could they put in the road? Not the road, no. They got no. get permits for that. that no, but they could cut down that tree. So I, 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 it's I, raining, they can't do anything like that. Yeah. No, I know the board appreciates your comments and they've heard your comments. Can you offer any additional comments you'd want the board to do before well, they the make the decision? Well, the issue is, is what they, they haven't provided any issue uh, evidence in their voluminous evidence that uh, what the, what's going to happen when those trees get cut down to the storm drain runoff, which already gets filled at times and could potentially flood the turnpike. The stormwater plan will be part of land development as well. Yes. But again, if they cut down the trees, then the trees right now are what's stopping the water. They can cut it down anyway. Hurricane they season. can do it and, not, and sell the property. But you can tell them that land use wise, they have to wait. No. No, no we can't. But if you're saying, what if you're voting right now on their land use to build an We're apartment. voting on the use of the property as it was use, presented. Not land development. Right. So land use, you could say no. And then they could appeal. And in the you, appeal you, or they could just cut the trees down and sell the property as a flat property. What we're voting on that, 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 that would consider that would build a cost in for them that wouldn't make sense. Their um, business might yeah. increase the property value no, for them. It would I don't think so. My, my opinion was it, 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 <laughs> sitting there would. and seeing it, it would decrease the value of the property they already own and have built on, and it would not do anything to the property that they own and is just a you know flat piece of property other than the trees that are there. You know, I, I appreciate your ability yeah. to speak extemporaneously, and you are very knowledgeable. But hear this: all these issues that you're bringing up will be talked about in land development, and 
I'm very sympathetic of what you're saying, but this, this is not the place for that. So why is, so just to add for me, like why is 247 posted as the code that this hearing or that hearing? Or Act 247 is the state statute. It's the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, which governs all land use in Pennsylvania. From that, local townships adopt ordinances that fit their township. 247 is the general law. It's a general land development process. Right. So and that's stated in every land development in any town, borough, or, or city in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Right. So that's the thing that's posted. And included in that is amenities, energy use, um, morals. Um, you know, I don't know how they quantify morals, but like if all of those things are listed and there's more, um, what is the purpose of it being, the hearing being about that if we're not gonna include? Well, you had an opportunity, you were granted party status at the hearing as well as Mitch, Ms. Richmond, and you had the opportunity to present evidence and you made comment at that hearing and the board, the board has to listen to your comment, but it doesn't have to agree. Right, so why wouldn't the board though agree? I guess that's what I'm asking the board. Well, so that, 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 that is that up to that. This is an issue that is concerning and is part of. Sure, that is concerning, but perhaps they, they were satisfied with the testimony they heard from the applicant. They have to weigh that decision. What testimony did they hear from the applicant? That there was voluminous testimony from the applicant. In the hearing? Yes. Okay, most of their comments were, we don't know and we don't remember. <clears throat> I'm, I'm saying, if you can look up the thing, like 90% of their responses. And, that, and that's remember. your view, ma'am? It's, it's up to the board to make that the decision. There, the meeting. there was a hearing. You didn't come to the first hearing. Right. Right. So there was, uh, I think what the solicitor is referring to is that that first hearing, they had a, a large amount of testimony. At the second hearing, we ju the township accepted the testimony from the previous hearing. So when you were present at the second hearing, they did not the they did not have the same presentation that they did at the first hearing right and they did not answer the majority of the questions so concerning but also they weren't completely honest with some of their answers about talking to people who live there being on the property seeing the trees saying that they were taller than they you know what i'm saying like they're not i, I think the board is I, I think the board has heard your comments ma'am uh, Okay, well, the board represents me too. They do, 100%. So I'm, I'm interested to see what is the board's leaning towards this, and do you have any comments for the people, the residents, that I could take back to say why? You well, our comments to... were in the last meeting. No, comments about this interaction. Like, what, you know. Well, the board made a motion. Concerned. I believe the board made a motion to approve, and there's a second. You'll see how the vote goes. You have had an opportunity to comment. The comment is all of those items are land development. Okay trees are going to be gone and then not anything we can do about it and the road would be land development but part yes. of the block once the trees are gone and just about safety yeah. just sure i'm done thank okay. you in, in relation to, to what's just being shared how are the amenities going to be handled it was all discussed in the last one i heard the that. last two and i heard the testimony of the uh member of the uh group here tonight that those amenities are insufficient to have even allowed this to go forward in the first place. They're insufficient to the group that lives there now. That was her testimony that I heard with my own ears. So somehow that isn't part of your consideration tonight as well. That is not part of land development. They're gonna put a couple chairs on the front lawn. That was what I did hear the gentleman speaking. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Uh, I did hear that answer. Um, and that's all I heard. Conditional so use. So I'm concerned about that because these amenities, if you've ever been there on a weekend because you were invited to come, come to my pool. I got room. They have no room. No room. No room. And, and are those um, outdoor burners, are they working now? Because they weren't working. So that's all part of the right for them to have conditional use. So I'm a little confused about that. Let's say conditional that. use is if it's safe. If what is safe, Commissioner, I'm sorry. That, that's what we are discussing. Conditional use, they have to prove that it's there. It's safe and not hurting the welfare. What, what is safe though? What's your, what's the noun? 
traffic accidents, if you've approved, if, if, if they've proved safe? that, if they've proved uh, well, I'm fires, talking about the amenities, they because don't it. they get a bonus for the amenities that... These are things that, yes, these are things that uh, they would have had to, had to make sure that they were not against the health and safety and welfare of the township. So that is what conditional use. The, it's, so in sorry. order to hide the number of fires they've had at the grill this week, they replaced all the backing where all of the black burnt fire okay. marks were. So this this is, let's take this is one of these comments at a time. You had the opportunity to comment. I believe yes. Ms. Romano I'm wanted saying, to comment. No, I just wanted to okay. have clarification yes. listening to the resident herself who lives there as to the nature of these amenities. So that was a, if you will, hot topic during that proceedings that I attended. And I didn't hear anything there myself, but I don't sit up here to suggest that those amenities are sufficient for the people who live there now, let alone sufficient to allow you all to grant them the right to go forward with this at 252 units. That's my statement, thank you. First, thank you for allowing additional comment. I really appreciate it. And I want you to know that I am here because I care about the community. And that is why I am speaking up and I am challenging these things. Uh, regarding the amenities, there was <coughs> some disagreement and confusion about wh what was built and were they adequate. And Mr. Christmer, uh, at, in the June meeting, um, said that he did not state that the amenities were overbuilt, uh, but he felt that they were sufficient. However, in the May meeting, he did say, so we're adding 50 units on 250, adding 25% more units, I guess. But yeah, when we started this process, we went and spoke with our leasing property management folks. And generally, generally, you'll see that this at this at a lot of newer multi-family developments you sort of overbuild the amenities <coughs> so i was curious about that and i went back to 2015 and 2017 when the decisions were made on the original property there was no discussion in the record whatsoever about overbuilding amenities the amenities were for 246 units there is nothing in the decision in order about adding additional capacity as a condition uh, for any future development. So the approval was for 246 units. As has already been stated, those units, those amenities are already being overburdened. Uh, when I look back at uh, the 2015 hearing, I also learned that the I industrial uh, zoning designation did not originally have allowance for apartments, but for the original units on Maryland Road, text was added to the I industrial um, designation to allow for apartments. So that's how it happened. Uh, it was for this original property, and then it became available uh, for um, uh, conditional use on all I industrial. Uh, lots. And so that's how we, we got here today. Now, I respectfully disagree that the only topic we can talk about in a conditional use hearing is safety. We're here to talk about all of the elements of the conditional Th use. This ordinance. is not a conditional use hearing. I, I understand, you know. but I'm respectfully disagreeing with that assertion that was made tonight. You can disagree. I'm just telling you the conditional use hearing is closed. Right. All they're that. voting on is approval of a decision. Right. Okay. And I have made a comment that, uh, regarding a comment that was made tonight, and I believe that is my right. Okay. And back to the conditional use, it does not meet requirements. This property, as you know, and as I said before, is 1.648 acres. That does not qualify it. I do not see why we would be adding to the inventory at this point of uh, properties uh, that allow for apartments when we're already overburdened. And we don't need to be breaking rules to uh, make a developer happy at the expense of our town. And there are other elements in the conditional <laughs> use uh, ordinance that this uh, developer does not meet and is part of the testimony. Uh, for example, 
when it says that in addition to any fee in lieu of recreational amenities, blah, 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 about, I think blah, 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 I'll read the whole thing. When it says that in addition to any fee in lieu of recreational amenities, provisions for walking trails, gardens, and gathering spaces shall be made, including for appropriate connections to existing of future township and county required trails. There was some testimony from NOAA with regard to that. Would you agree that we comply with the requirements? And this was Mr. Conlon. Mr. Conlon replied, we will, not we do, we will. And in order to um, be in compliance with an ordinance, you have to demonstrate that you do in your application. Another snippet, the next requirement is that the developer shall be required where possible to preserve existing or to incorporate new natural features such as trees, streams, and open space areas, which shall add to the overall cohesive development of the district and overall township development. Do we comply with that requirement? Answer, we will. <coughs> we do, we will. We also know that the stormwater management plan is conceptual, and when it is named in the ordinance, it needs to be more developed than that. It needs to be an actual plan. And I could go on, I've already made those points. One more point is that the original development, the developers paid the township $200,000 in lieu of traffic impact because it was noted in the record that that apartment complex would affect traffic in the area. Now we're being told that the new one won't. So overall, I wanna say, I don't see why uh, when this, this, this uh, development has not provided new amenities um, and is stressing all the safety features that we have in this township, uh, that uh, we should go ahead with it. I, I'm not, not um, obviously, not in favor of putting 10 pounds of sausage in a five pound bag, which is what it, it, it amounts to, to me and to everyone who's testified here from the public. So thank you for your consideration. I hope you do understand what I'm trying to do here and that you take my words to heart. I do, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Mr. Freemuth wants to comment about something. Good evening, everyone. Andy Freemuth, attorney for the applicant. I just wanted to let you all know that I was here this evening um, representing the applicant. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to um, clarify that I, I didn't make any statements or testimony as the lawyer with respect to talking to anybody at the leasing um, department. I think the record speaks for itself. You are all here. You know your obligations with respect to conditional uses, and you're very familiar with the record, so we don't need to rehash um, any of that. Um, with respect to the one comment on the uh, connection to the circle, I just wanted to remind you all that that was at the recommendation of the uh, County Planning Commission and the APA from a planning perspective. So to the extent that that becomes an issue during land development that needs to be dis discussed further amongst all the other issues that were raised tonight, then of course that's a valid uh, topic. Um, and the, the uh, one, one more thing, my clients and uh, my witnesses were all under oath um, at the hearing. Uh, they swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, there was some indication that they, they might not have been forthcoming during that proceedings. Um, I do not believe that any of my witnesses perjured themselves at either of the hearings um, before you. Um, and then lastly, um, Mr. Kilkenny was kind enough to share a draft of the decision in the order before you all this evening. There was one condition. I did email the entire group uh, on Friday of last week with respect to consolidating the lots, which of course we are agreeable to doing. Um, I just had one comment on the timing. I believe that the draft order in front of you said prior to appearing before this board again for, for land development, if we're fortunate enough to get there. Um, I don't know that that timing is uh, actually appropriate. I think the more appropriate time for consolidation would be at land development. Um, I think if we actually consolidated the lots before land development, that might create actually a zoning violation because now you would have two principal buildings on one lot and two principal uses on one lot. So I just wanted to 
draw that to everyone's attention. Um, I don't think that there's issue, an issue with consolidating these lots. Obviously, we need to. Uh, it was just a comment that I had on timing. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And I just, uh, th I just want to be clear. Uh, Mr. Freemuth uh, said that uh, this was emailed to him, uh, this draft decision by my colleague, uh, Alex Palmer, and there was a reply by Mr. Freemuth. The reply was on uh, Friday, June 28th at 9.45 a.m. CC'd on that was Andy Freemuth, Alex Palmer, Rosemary Doman at gmail.com, and Sandra Richmond, uh, srichmond15 at gmail.com. Thank you. Okay. With that, we have a motion. We have a second. second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Nay. Nay. Okay. Abstain. Do we call the vote? Word one. No. No. Word two. No. Word three. Yes. Word four. No. Word five. Yes. Word six. Yes. So it fails. Okay. Okay. We move on. Uh, next we have, whoops, public health and safety. Oh, the last item for that. Yes, public health and safety. Okay, good evening. Uh, I just have some comments about what just happened. Motion to consider the feasibility. Wait. Uh, uh, Wait, I have a, uh, some questions about what just happened. So the motion failed. Does that mean that the conditional? Yes, they're going, to, they're going to take us to court. Yeah. <clears throat> or we could. Uh, it's no, it, it's it, done. It failed. It's done. It's done. It goes. They'll challenge it. Yeah. Court. Gotcha. Good. <laughs> uh, Okay, motion to consider all bids received May 22nd, 2024 for the new police facility and Upper Moulin Township Administration Building renovations and additions. I would like to uh, make a motion just because of the cost of this. Uh, we cannot sustain this cost uh, to reject all bids. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Any discussion from the public? Um, I just want to comment, what happened to the things they were going to come back with for energy efficiency and windows, et cetera? I thought they were coming back with another set of plans and included uh, I, all those things we talked about. All of those um, energy efficiencies were listed as alternate items. Uh -huh. They weren't part of the bid. Um, the board can accept or reject all of the alternates. The project uh, came in well over budget. And I think you're going to have an answer from the board here in, in a few seconds. All right, so it's not going to. Yeah. But all right. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? So moved. So we're rejecting the bids for the police station. Uh, I'm sure there'll be condition more discussion on that at later dates, but uh, for now, that issue is done. Uh, public health and safety. Back to Charles. Hey. Good evening. The committee recommends to the Board of Commissioners take action on the following motion to approve the acceptance of a SWAT vehicle for Montgomery County. Okay. Uh, they're willing to pay for it, the county. We have to house it and do the maintenance, uh, maintenance on it, which is a nice new uh, vehicle. Uh, so it should be minimal. Uh, and I think it's a big benefit to us to have this in our backyard. So uh, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Public. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Approved. Okay, and remember, it's free. <laughs> we, uh, for the August meeting, we will not be meeting. Public Health and Safety Committee will not be meeting in August. Okay, thank you. Next, Finance Administrative Committee. 
All right, the committee uh, recommends the Board of Commissioners to take action on the following. Motion to approve the reappointment of Gen Jennifer T. Mullen as Ward 4 representative on the advisory planning agency to serve as a new two-year term that will expire June 1st, 2026. We have a motion to be a second. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain. Abstain. Uh, motion to approve the appointment of Fred Standard as Ward 2 representative on the advisory planning agency to serve a two, new two-year term that will expire June 1st, 2026. We have a motion to a second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Public discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, approved. Motion to approve the reappointment of Christian Henderson as Ward 6 representative on the advisory planning agency to serve a new two-year term that will expire June 1st, 2026. Do I have a second? Second. A second. Uh, any discussion? Public? All in favor say aye. 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 And I abstain, which so moved. Motion to approve the reappointment of James Farrell on the Police Pension Fund Committee to serve a new three year term that will expire on June 6, 2027. Motion is second. Second. Discussion? Public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, approved. Motion to approve the appointment of E.J. Nichols on the Human Relations Commission to fill the vacancy left by Lynn Reber and serve a, serve a current three-year term to expire on December 31st, 2026. Motion, we have a second. Second. We have a second. A uh, discussion, public discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Against, abstain, so moved. <coughs> approved. A motion to approve the appointment of Barbara Tuck on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Council to fill the <coughs> one vacancy left by Mary Meister and serve a current two-year term that will expire on March 1st, 2025. Motion to be a second. Second. Any discussion? Public discussion? <coughs> In favor, say aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Approved. The committee recommends the approval of the general funds check beginning with check number 141322 and ending in check number 141621. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Against? Approved? Yeah, escrow fund checks beginning in check number 9798 and ending in check number 9804. Okay, uh, second. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Against, abstain, approved. And the committee recommends for liquid fuel fund checks, beginning with check number 3122 and ending in check number 3126. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, <laughs> any discussion? Public, all in favor, say aye. 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 Against, abstain, approved. Other items on the agenda. Um, so motion to approve and ratify the 2021 through 2024 collective bargaining agreement between Upper Moreland Township and the Police Benevolent Association. We have a second. Second. Okay, uh, what this is is just the, the last contract that we had. Uh, we finally uh, ratified it between the township, the wording and everything, and the Police Benevolent Association. Uh, any comments? Public comments, all in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, approved. And the motion to approve and ratify the 2021 through 2024 Police Benevolent Association Pension Addendum. Okay, uh, second. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain, approved. And um, so we discussed the, the following two items that were brought up in our previous meeting last month. Um, this is to approve amending and advertising um, ordinance number 1744, single use plastic bag ban, as required to receive public comment at the August 5th, 2024 regular meeting. Okay, uh, I'd like to, Sean, yeah. this is, we already have a procedure. We do have a procedure, maybe that wasn't as clear at CDC or when it was talked about, we have a, a call where we go over the uh, we go over the agenda. Myself, Pat, and, and Kip, and Alex usually, 
And uh, Alex brought up the fact that uh, when uh, previously there had been exemptions uh, requested, uh, they've been sent to the township manager and the board chose to get the township manager that discretion rather than amending something and having it come back to the board. Obviously, if it was something controversial or uh, that, you know, Pat or anyone else felt, uh, you know, might uh, be against the spirit of the ordinance, it would, of course, bring it to the board's attention that it was kind of um, our, our recommendation after that call that we essentially keep the, keep the policy as is and that those requests for an exemption would go to, to Pat rather than coming before the board, if that's okay with the board. That is the ordinance, so. Okay. <laughs> so we don't really, there's no. Discussion. I don't think anybody, is that correct, Pat, or? Yeah. It, it, that's correct, yes. yeah. exactly. Right. Do we have to vote this down, or it says discuss or make uh, it? We don't, don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to do anything. Is it? Yeah. Already one there. So item three, C, we're, CI, we're taking off for that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. What about I2, CIs? What about the second one? Yes. Yes, what? They would both go down. Okay, go down, got it. Uh, is this the so, uh, Weiss market? Which way? This about the if there's a hardship on the plastic bag. One of them, yeah. But and there was a question. They can request to not have to charge for the paper. They can request it, yeah. Okay. And that would go through Pat's office. The, the, the issue at hand was a supermarket in the township was losing monthly revenue in excess of $30,000. They believe that it was a direct result of having to charge for the um, recyclable paper bag where the, the visitors said they would go to another community, which was less than a half a mile away where they didn't have to pay for the bag. So the argument from the supermarket is that we're losing revenue because of this and what can we do? Can we get an exemption or can we change the ordinance? And that's where this discussion started. Um, we were unaware, I was unaware that the practice had been that the township manager can make that decision if there's a hardship. So it was brought before the board for continued discussion after a meeting today and information that we've just received. Uh, that's a decision that can be placed in the township manager's hands. Unless it's uh, something that I'm unsure of, I would reach out to the Board of Commissioners. I just, I just had a question. It was a question of, do they have evidence losing $30,000? Or is it just, you know, no. resistance? This is just a discretion on Pat. They, the board moved it to the township, whoever the township manager is, to make a decision in his thought. He can investigate it however he wants. He can put a form up, he could, however he wants to handle it. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear that because I think, you know, the, the point is to make people bring their own bags. Right. That's the whole issue. So, if, you know. I, Commissioner, I can assure you that I will in, ensure that there's evidence available and it is a hardship. This is not something, uh, this ordinance is in place for a reason, and just the fact that someone doesn't want to do it right. does not give them a hardship. Right. Okay, we will remove that. Uh, and there's no, any new business for funding? No. Okay, next, Parks and Recreation. Uh, there are no recommendations uh, for the board's decision tonight. Uh, and I... Uh, well, NASA, so we're not going to be meeting in August. Okay, thank you. Uh, make the, uh, the community development will not meet in August either. So we will have the first meeting in August, which is the full board. That will be the only meeting in August. Uh, let me see here. Also, uh, under commissioner comments, the board met in executive session prior to here. Uh, Litigation personnel. personnel. Yep. Uh, discussions. Uh, also, Pat, I would like to find out all we, the new, and this I guess would go to Paul or wherever it is. Uh, I thought we would have all the new codes and ordinances in front of us. I thought they said April or May uh, for the, all the new changes, which includes apartments in industrial. Uh, and stuff. Could you just find that out since before the next meeting uh, and find out where that is? And to, so yeah, I, I believe us. Paul's working with solicitor's office and I will follow up on that tomorrow. Okay. Because uh, could we de get that on the agenda for next week and then vote for that in August? <laughs> is that possible or is that too fast? We've got to find out where it is. Okay. That, that's why I'm asking. I, would, I want to vote for it. Yeah. I thought we would be voting for that in June. Yeah. To, 
to eliminate okay. uh, these apartments in the industrial stuff. Okay, uh, any other comments from commissioners? Hope everybody has a, a July 4th. And with that, we're adjourned.